Howdy folks, I'm Brian, and here's some Reddit. Our first letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Causing My Family to Miss My Brother's Wedding? My wife and I just lost our second baby. Our first was a stillbirth. Our daughter lived only for a month due to a medical condition. We didn't get to take her home, but we have a few pictures of her before she passed away three weeks ago. It's difficult trying to get used to living like that, but we have no choice. My wife and I missed on some family events, including my brother's wedding. Everyone was being considerate and gave us enough space to regain strength. I work long hours and night shifts while my wife stays home. I was on shift the day of my brother's wedding. A few days ago, my mom and sister were complaining about my brother's fiancé's no child rule and they wanted someone to watch the kids for a few hours. My sister suggested that we do that, but I told her that I had to work and my wife wasn't up to it, and I really thought that would be the end of the discussion. On the day of the wedding, I left for home for work at 3. I get a call from my wife at around 5 telling me that my cousin just came and dropped off 6 kids from my family at our house and told her that he'd come back to pick them up later. I was livid. I went home and I started calling my sister, cousin, and sister-in-law to come and pick up the kids right then. They kept stalling, but I demanded that they tell my cousin to turn around and come pick up the kids. Instead, they started showing up one by one, taking their kids, cussing me out and claiming that I was overreacting since my wife didn't say anything. My wife doesn't know how to say no, and so it's on me to set boundaries, although it's hard with them calling me the problem. My parents said I caused the family to miss most of my brother's wedding by looking for someone else to watch the kids and basically blamed me for refusing to take the kids just for a few hours, saying I didn't understand because I don't have kids. I don't know how hard it is. That line cut too deep. I've already had two kids that I lost. Everyone's arguing with me for causing them this issue on the wedding and say I ruined it instead of doing them this one little favor. I sent a mass text telling them that they can start blaming each other instead of us, after I told them that we couldn't watch the kids. Now they won't even want to see me. Was I the jerk for this? Alright OP, no, you weren't the jerk here. You gave them forewarning that you weren't going to be able to watch the kids. Then they show up on the day of the wedding and drop the kids off. And then they have the audacity to be like, oh, well, you ruined the wedding because you wouldn't watch over the kids. No, they had plenty of opportunity to find alternative child care. They just chose not to. They literally chose not to. They knew your wife was a doormat and was going to acquiesce to them. And so they're just like, oh, she'll just do whatever we tell them her to do. And so they just dropped them off. So I'm glad that you you have your wife's back here and that you were looking out for her. I think your family sounds like they made some really poor decisions here. And it seems like hopefully in the future they decide to do the right thing. But no, you didn't cause their problems. Poor planning on their part does not constitute an emergency on your part. Let's bombard two grieving parents mere weeks after they lost their child with six kids so we can party at a wedding. Oh, heck no. I would have said some pretty choice wordy things that would have gotten me a harassment lawsuit. You don't do this, especially to two people who have had both of their children pass. And to say something like, you don't have kids, so how can you know our struggle is absolutely disgusting. They knew what you and your wife had been through. And to throw that in your face? No. I would have cut them off so fast they would have split in two. I think that's fair. Someone below says, should have called the cops about abandoning their children. (laughs) That might have, that might not have gone over so well with the family either. (laughs) All right. Our next story is a little bit lighter. Speaking of calling the cops. No, there's no cops in this story. This one's lighter. It'll be funner. Am I a jerk for switching the penguins? 
I am a 28-year-old female, and I have twin boys, Sam and Dominique. They are five years old. This afternoon, while I was at the pharmacy with the boys, they found these toy penguins and instantly became obsessed with them. I really don't understand why. They were just these small beanie baby-like penguins. They begged and begged for them, and I was feeling generous. I was like, sure, why not? Two dollars each to make them happy is a pretty solid deal after all. Later that night, when I was getting the boys ready for bed, Sam started panicking because he randomly realized that he didn't have his penguin, so he went to the living room looking for it. When he came back to the room, Dominique started crying because he believed it was his penguin. I tried to console him by giving him the other penguin, but he was not having it. Dominique was convinced that he knows Sam's penguin is his because the eyes has a weird shape. Side note, it doesn't, they're identical. I decided the best way to settle this would be if I took it to the kitchen to examine them both and I'll be able to tell which one is which. They handed me both penguins and when I get to the kitchen, I pretend that I'm getting my glasses and inspect them. And then I give Dominique the penguin that Sam found and say, look at this penguin's eyes are the same shape, but the other has one wider eye. The whole thing was kind of confusing, but they seemed to be cool with it and went on with our bedtime routines without much fuss. I was telling my husband about how silly the whole night was because of the big penguin debacle, and he actually responded with, why would you do that? I asked him what he meant by that, and he said, I gaslit them into submission. I really think that's a stretch because both boys were happy with the results and it was like a little game. I thought it would be fun to see what Reddit thinks. So, am I a jerk? Wow, I am amazed that so many people are invested in the Great Penguin debacle of 2020. 2021. I talked to my husband about what he meant by gaslighting. And he says he just doesn't like the idea of lying to the boys, which I get that. But ultimately, he isn't super upset about it. I asked Sam and Dominique if they wanted their names on the penguins, but they want to put the penguins' names on them instead. Penguin 1 is now Booger, and Penguin 2 is now Carl. Beloved new members of the family. All right, OP. You know, I think that honesty is the best policy. I don't think this was gaslighting as much as it was like a little white lie. Um, you know, white lies probably are still not necessarily the best policy, but being a parent at bedtime, trying to get your kids to bed who are having a meltdown over the penguin, a penguin debacle, I can understand why you resorted to that. So, and it seemed to satiate them, and now they are going to have the names put on them. You know, in the grand scheme of things, of the things you could lie to your kids about, this is a pretty minor one. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a white lie. Um, And I can understand where your husband's coming from here, too. I think that lying to your kids, even white lies, probably is a little in poor taste. But also like you know this was not a harmful thing so i think the harm here is minimal if at all maybe someday in 20 years they will uh think back on this and then be like oh my our mom's lie our mom lied to us she clearly did that to just kind of get us to stop arguing and at that point in time they'll probably be like yeah we probably deserve to be lied to. <laughs> I mean, thinking back, like you can you can think of times when your parents lied to you, and like you you you're not like uh, most of the, some of some of the times. I think you can be like, yeah, I guess they probably were just tired of us at that point in time or something. I don't know. Not the jerk. What else were you supposed to do? A DNA test? <laughs> oh, that's. That comment wins. That is the winning comment. I would love to know what OP's husband would have done, considering one, it was bedtime, so the kids can be overtired, two, they are five, and 
three, it's a toy penguin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not much else. I mean, I think that what she did here is not necessarily a bad thing. Exactly. Another thing that bothers me is gaslighting is so overused by people like OP's husband. Gaslighting is a long, sustained psychological manipulation. This was a quick, simple sleight of hand, no harm, no foul. Or no foul, <laughs> since penguins aren't technically, well, you know, I'll stop there. <laughs> All the puns. All right. Not the jerk, what your husband doesn't understand, gaslighting. You handled a five-year-old's concern in a manner that was appropriate and made them happy. Is your husband also highly opposed to Santa, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy? I mean, I know I, I probably, again, will be controversial in this, but, you know, I actually don't agree with lying to kids about Santa, Easter Bunny, or Tooth Fairy. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Yeah, gaslighting would be making the kids believe that there were never any penguins to begin with. <laughs> that's actually, yeah, yeah, that's that's would have been gaslighting in this situation to have taken them away and then be like, no, there were no penguins, no penguins, no, they were they were these rabbits the whole time. All right, our final letter is titled "Am I a jerk for making my son eat leftovers when everyone else had his favorite meal?" Throw away because I don't want this link to my main. On phone, so sorry for the formatting. I'm a 34-year-old male and my wife is a 35-year-old female. And we have two kids, Adam, 12, and Jasmine, 8. We both come from cultures where rich people wasted a ton of food while there were people just starving around the corner. So we were conscious about food waste. Also, I've seen relatives with kids who are extremely picky eaters, and it wasn't something I wanted to deal with. So, when Adam was old enough to start being fussy about his food, we introduced a new rule. If you don't finish your dinner, it's going to be your breakfast the next day. This was mainly to get him to finish his veggies. When he was old enough, he started picking his own serving sizes, so we weren't forcing him to eat extra. We're both good cooks, so he enjoys and finishes most of his meals promptly. We kind of forgot about this rule for a while until Jasmine started becoming fussy recently, so we introduced it again. To make it fair, Adam is also doing it. Last night, he overserved himself and he couldn't finish his food. This morning, my wife's family came over for breakfast, COVID guidelines allow, so she wanted to treat them and made her special French toast and homemade croissants. Adam's favorite meal, which he got excited for. But when we sat down for breakfast, he was shocked to find his plate full of leftovers waiting for him. His face got gloomy and he ate in silence. He was too full by the end to eat any breakfast. After breakfast, her parents berated us for being cruel and torturing him. We defended ourselves by saying that it would have been unfair on Jasmine if her brother gets to avoid his leftovers, but she never does. Now, I think I could have been the jerk because he's been really good about eating his food recently. Also, we could have made him finish it for lunch. So, Reddit, am I the jerk? And there's an edit. Edit, thanks for everyone's input. Don't think the judgment is official yet, but already accept that I was the jerk in this case. I said sorry to Adam and that he'll be getting breakfast next week. Too much effort for my wife to make again anytime sooner. We'll probably make it so you have to finish the leftovers for lunch or dinner from now on instead. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely understand where you're coming from here. And I mean, I think you have already got a resolution. So that's just it. It's like, I think forcing him to eat you know the the dinner for breakfast when he was being could have had his favorite breakfast i i think that went a little too far and i think that you've realized that now and so i'm glad that you've come around and apologized to him and you know i think that it probably took a situation that could have been you know a nice fun light family breakfast and kind of turned it into a less than great occasion 
And, you know, using food as a punishment, in this case, this is what it's being used as because he didn't get to eat his favorite breakfast, um, I think is in poor taste. You know, you really should not use food as a reward system that can help to that can help to cause disordered eating. So just keep that in mind. As for like finishing the leftovers the next day, I actually think that's mostly reasonable. Um, as long as it's again not being used as a punishment, you should just use it as the, in the context of we don't waste food, and you know, so we're gonna eat leftovers. Nothing wrong with eating leftovers. You're the jerk. This was a special visit and treat. Making a single error in portion size then punishing him is really a jerk move when you say Adam is usually good about it. Making food part of rewards and punishment is exactly how children get eating disorders. This really disturbed me to read how you punished him for something so minor and ruined what should have been an enjoyable visit. Yeah. They didn't need to cancel the punishment altogether. They could have just postponed it for dinner if he really wanted to make sure the food got eaten. Yeah, and again, I don't think it should be framed as a punishment. I should think it should just be framed as if you, you know, don't finish your portions, then you'll just eat them tomorrow. Don't be like, this is this is discipline. This is just, yeah, a, a reality of the world. You know, if mom and dad don't eat their food, then they'll eat leftovers the next day. You know, we often eat leftovers if we don't finish our portions then that's how we handle it in our household is we'll put it away and eat it later it's not a punishment it's just what people do <laughs> you're the jerk i grew up in a household where we couldn't leave the table until we cleaned our plates didn't matter if you were hungry didn't matter if it was food you hated it didn't matter if you were usually good about eating your vegetables i'm now 41 I've had a lifetime of problems with food and my weight. Food should never be a reward or punishment. It's just food. It's not a moral or immoral thing. What you did do is leave a scar. Your rigidity left him feeling excluded and disappointed. You're giving him a weird relationship towards food, a thing that will require for the rest of his life. You could have given him to, you could have given it to him for lunch. You already know that was a jerk thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I think that brings up a lot of good points. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.